Hi, this is Sarah Mikesell with The Pig Site, and today we're online with Dr. Uis Baba Kamats. He is a veterinarian working as a swine researcher with Trow Nutrition. Uis has worked with Trow Nutrition for three years, and part of his research is focused on Streptococcus suis. Uh, thanks for being with us today, Uis. Hey, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Um, given the reduction in antibiotic use around the world, uh, diseases like Streptococcus we seem to be coming to be more common uh, and more commonly seen. Tell us a little bit about how the disease really affects the pig. Well, first keep in mind that uh, this is a very prevalent bacteria. So almost every farm and mm -hmm. almost 100% of the pigs in every farm will have it. So colonization starts at the firing unit after birth. Pigs get colonized and then transmission can happen anytime through sucking phase to nursery phase. And um, that transmission and that carriership of strep doesn't mean they will become sick and develop a disease. Uh, they need a trigger and those triggers can be co-infections. They can be lack of calostration, therefore a um, sensitivity or a susceptibility window phase where there's no immune response or um, yeah, there's, there's no protection for the pig. So there's a window mm -hmm. there where strep can colonize. So first things are gonna be related to management. And, and I think it's important to keep in mind those uh, potential triggers. The bacteria colonizes through the respiratory tract and that's where most of the evidence has been described. And some discussion is nowadays also positioned on the gastrointestinal route of infection. Mm -hmm. Although demonstrated only once, I think we still have to think it's an option and the lack of evidence doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So um, we want to cover that time of susceptibility where the piglets don't have antibodies from right. day 18 of life till um, 10 days, uh, 14 days post weaning. And yeah, bacteria, once it crosses to the bloodstream um, through those mucosas, it will colonized very rapidly, it has viral infectors like the capsula, and avoiding immune system. And once it colonizes like heart valves, brain tissue, the meninges or joints, et cetera, it's almost unstoppable. And those pigs will suffer from severe clinical signs and death unless they are treated with antibiotic. Uh, one important, um, thing that we can copy from humans is that once the pigs get the uh, meningi meningitis signs, for example, they lost, they lost a lot of water, they lost minerals. So we wanna use anti-inflammatories, we wanna make sure they drink water and we can support them with minerals. Those are strategies used in humans. And yeah, I think that that's what is, is happening behind the pig. Very good. And, um... I guess uh, you talked a lot about kind of some of these triggering events. And can you share some practical tips uh, to reduce strep on farm? And what can farmers do? Yeah, so uh, as I was saying, because there are those tri trigger factors, um, and one of them is clearly the, uh, the immune window when they lost, they clear all those antibodies. So one is gonna be calostration. We want, um, we want to make sure that the piglets drink about 250 grams of colostrum, uh, which is going to be the first milk 24 hours right. of birth. And, and that should ensure that maternal antibodies are there for, uh, for the first steps. Then uh, once we move those piglets to transition phase and we wean them, uh, we know some transmission of strep suits is happening there. And some pigs that were not colonized through birth they will be colonized through remixing different leaders. So that we wanna make sure that the gut health and um, the environment is ideal. So uh, getting them up to feed as soon as possible, mm -hmm. uh, it's key. Then we wanna make sure they have good quality air, uh, proper ventilation and proper temperature. Um, all the things that are gonna trigger a co-infection. So if we know that we have diseases around, we want to avoid uh, potential cross crossing of those diseases. Remixing different age peaks are gonna increase the susceptibility and the risk 
of, of having a strap in the farm. And uh, we want to make sure we don't confuse it with other um, pathogens. So we need proper diagnosis. Once we have a dead animal, we should send it mm -hmm. for an necropsy and try to isolate that bacteria. Because it could well be that we are confusing um, the signs of neurological meningitis mm -hmm. with others uh, like Glossarella and chemicals or, or the toxins from Cigella E. coli. And um, other practical um, measures, I think it's just um, taking care of the pigs, being, being there on top. It makes a difference to find a pig with meningitis uh, one or two hours from the first clinical sign or to find it eight hours later. Right. And if you're on top of a pig, you can save it. Otherwise, uh, definitely uh, antibiotics won't be enough. Very good. And, and just one follow-up question. I mean, it sounds like there is this kind of immunity gap. Uh, I don't know if that's the proper term for it, but where piglets are really going to be vulnerable this time frame. And that's a key that seems key to this, that you really have to uh, be watchful during this, this gap of uh, vulnerability. Yeah, uh, we know that a clearance of maternal antibody, either coming from sow uh, strep suisse contact or a potential autog autogenous vaccine or bacterium developed for the farm, um, scientific literature tells us that the clearance just happens around day 18. And from there, they, they get without anti antibodies up to second week post weaning in average. So it's key to try and understand why uh, some piglets still have antibodies for a longer period of time or not, or would be key right. to find a vaccine that can induce an immune response against specific strains uh, around the age they get with. But there seems to be a cross reaction between maternal antibodies and vaccines in revaccinating the pigs. So there's a lot of work going on now on adjuvants um, there. And uh, from that perspective, nutrition wise, we can do very little other than the making sure that we have um, resilient and strong pigs. And yeah, this is. This is a very complex disease, Sarah. Yeah, very much so. Well, thank you so much for all the information today. Yeah, it was great. Take care. This, yeah, thanks for joining me. This is Sarah Mikesell with The Pig Site. Mm -hmm.